hello my friends welcome to my youtube channel and today i am going to talk about the second part of spc which is statistical process control and in this video you are going to learn about cp cpk and pppk and the what is the difference between them so before starting this video i would like to say you if still you have not subscribed to my youtube channel then please do subscribe first and also press on the bell icon to get the notification about my future videos so without wasting any time let's start the video so friends first of all we have need to understand what is process capability study Process capability is a statistical measurement of a process ability to manufacture parts within the specification on a consistent basis. What is specification? Specification will be voice of customer. To determine how our process is operating, we can calculate CP, CPK or PP and PPK depending upon the state of process and the method of determining the standard deviation or sigma value. So friends, from here you will understand the difference between voice of the customer and voice of the process. So first of all, we have need to understand what is voice of the customer. Here you can see there are two specification limits, LSL and USL. LSL means lower specification limit and USL means upper specification limit. So these specification limits are voice of customer. For example, in specification 25 plus minus 0.2, the lower specification limit will be 24.80 and upper specification limit will be 25.02. So these specification limits will be voice of customer. And what is the voice of process? Voice of process means what is the performance of our process with respect to these specification limits. So friends, let's move to the next SPC working steps. Friends, there are some steps that we have need to follow to do the SPC. First one is you have to define the process where you want to do SPC. Second one is you have to select the critical parameter which is CTQ. CTQ means critical to quality. Third one is you have to collect the data for SPC. Fourth one is check the stability of process. If it is not stable then identify and fix special causes. And if you find it as stable then check the process capability. And fifth one is if the process is capable then do SPC to maintain process stability. If the process is not capable then improve the process capability. So these were the SPC working steps that we must follow to do the SPC. So friends in the concept of SPC there are some important indexes which are CP, CPK and PP, PPK. And we should know the difference between CP, CPK and PP, PPK. So friends next is CP index. What is CP index? CP is the capability index. It measures how well the data might fit between the specification limits. Specification limits will be USL and LSL. Upper specification limit and lower specification limit. It doesn't care if the process is centered within the limits only. If it would fit if it was centered. And you can see here the spread of process between the USL and LSL. So friends in CP index the formula of CP will be equal to USL minus LSL divided by 6 sigma within. The value of sigma will be equal to R bar upon D2. R bar is average range and D2 is the constant. The value of D2 is given in the AIAG table and USL minus LSL is the voice of customer and 6 sigma within represents the width of process. So friends this was the formula of CP index. So friends you can understand from here the capability of process will depend upon the value of CP. Greater will be the value of CP, smaller will be the width of process. If the value of CP will be equal to 0.5 then width of process will be out of the specification limits. If the value of CP will be equal to 1 then the width of process will touch the USL and LSL. 
if the value of cp will be 2 then the width of process will be more smaller and if cp will be equal to 3 then the process will be more excellence so friends excellence of process will depend upon the value of cp so here is the acceptance criteria of cp index depending upon the value of cp what will be the status of process capability and what type of inspection and action required if the value of cp will be less than 1 then the process will be incapable and 100% inspection is required in this case if the value of cp will be in between 1 and 3 then the process will be capable and normal sample size is taken for inspection if the value of cp will be greater than 3 then the process will be very capable and no inspection is required as the process is capable in this case so friends let's move to the next cpk index what is cpk index cpk is the centering capability index it measures how well the data is centered between the specification limit here you can see the shift of process from center in between the usl and lsl it means the center of process is how much far from the specification limits so friends there are formulas of cpk index according to the specification limits which are cpu and cpl cpu shows the relationship between mean of process and usl that how mean close to the usl the formula of cpu will be equal to usl minus x double bar divided by 3 sigma and cpl shows the relationship between mean of process and lsl is how mean close to the lsl the formula of cpl will be equal to x double bar minus lsl divided by 3 sigma in case of cpk for bilateral tolerance we take minimum of cpu and cpl cpu is for unilateral tolerance on upper limit and cpl is for unilateral tolerance on lower limit so friends you can understand from here lesser will be the value of cpk more the process will be shifted from the center you also can see the value of cp is same but the value of cpk is different and the point should be noted that the value of cpk cannot be greater than the value of cp and it will be equal to the value of cp or lesser than the value of cp so friends let's move to the next use of cp and cpk use cp cpk when you have sample node the population and are testing the potential capability of a process to meet the customer need so let's discuss about pp and ppk process performance metrics pp is the performance index pp ppk are same as the cp cpk with the difference is pp ppk is used for long term data which is population and cp cpk is used for short term data which are samples so friends next is how do cp and cpk relate to sigma so friends if cp cpk is equal to 1 then it will be equal to 3 sigma and 100% of specification tolerance is used in this case if cp cpk will be equal to 1.33 then it will be equal to 4 sigma and 70% of specification tolerance is used in this case if cp cpk will be equal to 1.66 then it will be equal to 5 sigma and 60% of specification tolerance is used in this case if cp cpk is equal to 2.0 then it will be equal to 6 sigma and 50% of specification tolerance is used in this case so there are some notes on relating cp and cpk if cp is equal to cpk then the process is perfectly centered because cpk accounts for centering where cp does not cpk can never be larger than cp both assume a stable process and what will be the acceptance criteria for ppk and cpk for ppk ppk should be more than or equal to 1.67 and for cpk 
सी पी के शुड बी मोर देन और इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट थ्री थ्री सी पी इज स्प्रेड ऑफ प्रोसेस विद इन द स्पेसिफिकेशन लिमिट एंड सी पी के इज शिफ्ट ऑफ प्रोसेस मीन फ्रॉम स्पेसिफिकेशन लिमिट सो फ्रेंड्स थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग माई वीडियो इफ यू रियली लाइक दिस वीडियो दैन प्लीज डू लाइक एंड शेयर विद योर फ्रेंड्स एंड कोलीग्स एंड आल्सो सब्सक्राइब टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस ऑन द बेल आइकन टू गेट द नोटिफिकेशन अबाउट माई फ्यूचर वीडियोज़